Hey guys, this is the behind the scenes to James Bond versus Agent 47. What we wanted to do is focus the behind the scenes on something more specific. So one of the themes that we had during this film is that we based it on the style of the director Matthew Vaughn, best known for films that he's done based on Mark Miller novels, such as Kick-Ass, uh, Kingsman, and he's done a lot of other stuff himself as well. What we really like about Matthew Vaughn is the way in which he shoots fight scenes. They came a new style to fight scenes, uh, say, like Born Identity kind mm -hmm. of time, mm -hmm. uh, where they started doing more handheld stuff. But the problem with that was, is the fight scenes also got a lot more messy. So as much as they were introducing all these cool new ways of doing fight scenes, they became very sort of cluttered and you couldn't see what was going on. It became very sort of like annoying to watch essentially. But what Matthew Vaughn did is he kind of mixed the classic and the new in this like beautifully clean way of doing a fight scene, but it still has that feeling of bam in your face. I looked at The Kingsman, for example. He doesn't use anything complicated. Everything's very sort of flat panel. This is what's going on. He's not shaking the camera around or anything like that, yet somehow everything's really exciting, everything draws you in. I studied it frame by frame, take the fight scene from the pub for example with Colin Firth. It's all down to the edit and what he does in the edit is he does this thing, now a lot of people do it already, where they will cut out a couple of frames just before a song hits, so instead of like a slow punch you get a, like it's really fast. Um, but on top of that, I mean a lot of people use that already, so that kind of gives you that looks like someone's been properly punched, it gives it that sharpness. On top of that, he does this thing, and we don't know what he calls it, he probably has a name for it, I imagine he does. Uh, we, we ended up calling it slam cuts, so everyone understood what we're talking about, slam cuts. So the idea is, is when the fist is about to hit the impact point or whatever, um, you cut a few frames out just before it impacts, so those frames there no longer exist, so it just goes <laughs> But on impact, he also does this thing where he increases the size of the frame. So as soon as the impact happens, it's almost like the frame's been hit at the same time. So instead of having to shake the cameraman about, he's shaking the screen around itself. So that will impact, the frame will get bigger, and he adds a little camera shake as well. And then it sort of slowly soothes back to what it normally was. So it's barely noticeable that he modified the frame in any way, but you still have that effect of every punch hurts. I did an example a year ago just to, just to test out the effect. And you can kind of see the difference between me punching in front of a camera and then me punching with slam cuts added in front of a camera. And there's a huge difference. When we decided we were gonna do Matthew Vaughn as the influence for the director um, for Bond versus Asian 47, uh, we really looked into the way that he deals with action, like Charlie says. And I think one of the main things that he does as a director is he tries to make every action shot creative and inventive which is always fantastic when you're doing action because you know it keeps the audience interested and it's not just your generic back and forth and um, so when it came to do the effects one of the shots was a character my character being shot in the face by agent 47's gun and he's caught, we, gun. He's caught gun yes Oh, that's a new one. From between his gun, which was eyes. Um, which we could have just done with a basic muzzle flash and it would have looked fine, but I thought it might have been funny or in interesting to have the bullet shoot towards the screen and in that bullet have the reflection of my face looking stunned just before it goes flying through my face. Um, so those kind of things, it's a little attention to detail and just a little bit of creativity that makes all the difference because people remember that and they're like, oh, I remember that bit with the reflection in the bullet or the bullet shooting towards the camera. And it's just that that just makes it a little bit more interesting. It's the, the ball kicking as well, which is the same, yes. same sort of the, method, but the groin, groin shot, we took influence from Layer Cake. Uh, Charlie showed me the scene in which his character shoots on in the face. So we start off with our groins and it just zooms out and we just, we just cut it. So we filmed it twice, we filmed it close up and then we filmed it far away. We wanted to have the proper impact of the, the, the foot making contact with Sean's groin. Yeah, the question and, is how do you kick a yeah. man in the balls 
realistically without the, kicking, kicking a man in the balls. balls. <laughs> and obviously we don't have, uh, you know, groin cups or anything that was on set so he could just boot him in the groin. So I thought, why don't we just film it separately? So we film Hitman in one frame and then we film James Bond in the other and then we just cut it down the middle and then just mask in uh, Agent 47's foot. But we need the impact, so we actually just got a cushion, and I held the cushion, and he boots the cushion, and we're getting that impact to him and like the resistance against his leg, and then Sean obviously just did like a kind of hop and a, a react, a reaction tip, which <laughs> yeah. worked pretty Go well. Goofy hop, just lift, lift, yeah. lifting him off the ground, and then piece it together, and then when you speed that up, it looks like he, he booted him in the groin. We're very lucky to have it retweeted by Hitman himself uh, on Twitter. Um, apparently the Stone Cold, Stone Cold Assassin uh, enjoyed the video so much that he decided to tweet it. I didn't know he had a Twitter, I thought he was supposed to be like top secret yeah, and things I like that. But he has a Twitter um, and he gave it his thumbs of approval. So did the developer, the IO Interactive, the guys who made the game. Um, I tweeted it to them and they said great job guys and stuff like that. So we've got a thumbs of approval from the guys who made the game and that's probably the best thing we could have achieved with this video other than thousands of views. Um, mm -hmm. So we're super happy and super delighted with the response. So if you haven't seen it already, go watch it. Um, and once you've watched it, please, any gamer friends, film buffs, anything like that, share it to them. Hopefully we'll get some subscribers out of it because I cannot stress how important it is to get subscribers because the more subscribers we have, the more content we can make. Uh, because I'm looking into sponsors and all of them want to see views and they want to see subscribers so as soon as those come in uh, these sponsors are gonna help us fund better quality films funnier stuff for the games that are coming out later this year and all that kind of stuff so you get to see all sorts of stuff and you know what comment as well if you want to see something that we haven't made yet suggest it because we're taking suggestions as well well let me tell you we've got some great ideas so and they're difficult so we need the subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> We're blowing up stuff and it's not cheap. <laughs> yes, but it is cool and you're gonna to wanna to see it, so subscribe.